Okay, so welcome. And um, I've just spotlighted Monique. Monique is the owner of The Happy Cook. She's been the owner for 15 years and she's here to show us uh, some knife skills. So thank you, Monique, and um, I'll give the floor to you. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys um, having me. And um, yeah, this is one of those things that is amazing that how often all of us are using knives, but uh, it's always, even if you've taken a knife skills class before or, um, it, or, or never before, there's always new things you can learn. And it is always interesting to find uh, what level of comfort people have with knives. And one of the things that we have found is commonly people uh, aren't sure if they're doing it right. They, they don't feel very comfortable. Um, and so we, this is one of those classes that we feel like just about everybody can, can benefit from who's, who uses, uh, is in the kitchen and, and doing different knife prep work. So um, I will give a disclosure. I'm not culinary school trained. I've owned the Happy Cook for 15 years. I've watched umpteen types of different types of knife skills from other chefs, uh, whether they be some of our private instructors that we use here to uh, we've had uh, world renowned chefs in who've done special events with us. And the interesting thing I would have to say is um, a lot of them teach knife skills all slightly different. There's some very specific things that are always about the same, but there's a lot of things in the, in the actual way to take a part of onion or things like that that do vary from um, chef to chef. And, and so basically what I'm gonna show you is the way I, um, from all these different experiences that I've had, what I've come across as what I feel like is the best um, technique specifically related to onions and some other things. Um, but we're going to go over just uh, a few different things. We're going to talk first about knives, a little bit about the different types of knives, because there are lots of different knives, and not everybody knows what one knife should be used compared to another. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the knives are and why you would use one knife over another. Um, we're also then going to uh, specifically spotlight how to chop an onion um, and uh, carrots, uh, how to appropriately use like a, a, a paring knife. I specifically grabbed just a, an orange to, to do a little paring of the um, skin off of, a, of an orange and then how to take apart and dice um, a bell pepper. And then we'll talk a little bit about care and sharpening and things like that um, related to your knives at the very end. Um, so first off, I was going to talk a little bit about the different knives because a lot we get this a lot of time at the Happy Cook. We have a huge knife case full of all these different knives. And people are like, you know, honestly, I pretty much do everything with this, you know, this paring knife here, you know, so not everybody uh, has knows which knife they should be grabbing. So I always feel like this is a good place to start. Um, so I did put these two knives on my board here. Um, this is a paring knife here and a chef's knife. And by far, these are going to be the most used tools um, with the most predominant use going to something like a chef's knife. And this is going to be the knife that we're mostly going to use for the things we're talking about today. So most chopping applications, veggie applications like that is normally going to be used with a large chef's knife. Um, pairing knives, interestingly, a lot of people in their kitchens do a lot of chopping with these knives, which is very much not how they are designed. Um, they do not have much clearance. It, they don't have much clearance here. If you're trying to chop with them, you're normally banging your knuckles. Um, and also it's not going to be very safe to, to actually try to take something apart like an onion with a small knife. Perry knives are a knife that is actually designed to be used in your hand, actually paring or peeling off the surface of something. So that would be what your perry knife is, gener or we're doing fine work, which we're gonna show that with the bell pepper. So that would be most commonly what your paring knife is used for. Um, this knife here I like to show because it's a unique knife, it's a fillet knife. Um, and this is something um, that is incredibly flexible. So the tip is completely flexible here. This is the type of knife that they use when they take apart, when you would, if you're gonna take apart um, fish, it will slide right between the flesh of the fish and then the skin. And so you can very easily get off um, and leave very little waste. The other thing that we have, um, we, I, I might show you kind of timing, you can actually use a paring knife to take the flesh out of a, a if you have taken um, an orange apart, you could actually use it again to separate the flesh from the um, skin. So fillet knives are most commonly associated with things like meat and fish applications, but there's actually a lot of veggie applications 
for these as well. But the most important thing is it's incredibly flexible and is going to be for separating things that are, have slightly different textures to them. So normally like a flush and a skin. Um, some knives that you might have seen a lot. This is an Asian style chopping knife called a Santuco. And it is used very similarly to a chef's knife, but it is of a much more up and down type of chopping motion. Um, and then you also, We'll talk about the chopping motion, but what we're gonna talk about mostly today would be a rocky motion, which you're gonna do with a chef's knife like this that's got the curvature. Um, and then these are some sort of hybrid smaller knives, um, which you might see. This would be like a utility knife here. You could use this to do some limited chopping, um, though it's um, really, it's, it's also gonna be used as a small carving knife, um, but, Again, I just want to show you a little bit of a selection of some of the different knives, but most commonly, this is going to, particularly when you're talking about veggie prep, things that we're talking about today, this is going to be the knife that you're mostly going to want to grab for. Um, and so now, the second thing I want to talk about is about how to hold the knife. Most common issue that people have when they grab a knife is they want to hold it, and I might do it close up here so you can see what I'm doing um, with my hand here, so hold on change the video. All right, so most people hold their knife kind of like this. And it, what happens here is that it's hard, I don't know if you can tell on this angle, but there's, there's a curvature here. It's not perfectly straight um, because you're holding it where it's coming out of the side of your hand. The correct way to hold a knife is to grab it at what's called the bolster. And so this knife here specifically actually has a smooth bolster that goes straight down into the blade. But that right there is the spot for your thumb and then your finger on the other side. So you're kind of, you're choking up on the knife. And now what happens is your knife is an extension of your hand and it moves with the same angle that your elbow is moving. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back out to a, a wider view real quick, but I just wanted to make sure that you could see that up close. So this is super important for both safety purposes um, and for control of the knife. But one of the things that you will find is if you appropriately hold the knife like this up at the bolster, pinching onto the bolster and then wrapping your fingers behind that. If you do this, this knife is securely, and I'm twisting the back of my blade here, this knife is securely, if I'm twisting the blade, I'm twisting my wrist, which also means if I'm going into something and it kicks off, it's going, it's nice and sturdy. When you hold a knife like this, it is almost takes no effort for the knife to twist. And this is where if you were to hold your knife like this and try to go through an onion and you just get a little change in the way the onion moves, you can very quickly twist that blade and start try going towards yourself unintentionally. Plus your angle is awkward. Your elbow is out of the way and not where you want it to be. You want this to be an extension of your knife where you move your elbow and your knife is moving with you. And this is how, if you're holding your knife correctly, if there's anything, there's two things I want you to learn today. One, it's how to hold your knife correctly. And then the second we're gonna talk about in a minute here is, is how to hold your other hand. But basically where your hands are and how they're working are the most important things today that I'd like you to, to understand. And if you do those, you're gonna be far more effective in the, in the kitchen with your knife as well as much safer. So both of these are kind of both safety and function types of tips. So again, if you're holding onto your bolster correctly and then that makes that knife an extension of your arm, this is how you're going to be able to correctly use your knife. Um, and the next thing is how then are you using it? What are you doing on the board? And the appropriate thing with this type of knife is a rocky motion. And this is very difficult to do if you're holding your knife sideways. So as long as you're using that correct pinching grip, what you're doing is just back and forth. And this is something, a lot of our knife skills classes, they tell people to just, when we're doing them here hands-on, to do this for a bit. It's just to get that motion just kind of up and down. And the blade, it's not, this should not be here. You should never hear this. That's the wrong sound. If you're hearing that in your kitchen, that's not, you're not slicing and dicing your vegetables appropriately. It should be a swishing back and forth, back and forth. The knife is actually, the blade is not leaving the board. It's sliding back and forth. I'm gonna do a close up of that real quick just to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just showing it kind of um, without anything first because it's kind of cleaner. When you get the vegetables in there, it starts to, you kind of see the vegetables moving around, you may not see it. So it's down and forward. 
back down and forward, back down and forward. And we're rocking off of, rotating back and forth, off of the belly of the knife, and it's going back and forth. So we'll show how, how that works as we get to the next step. Actually, maybe just to, to show it just a little bit. Again, the other piece of information about safety is your fingers. So here, you never want to hold your vegetables like this, because what are you doing? Right now, those fingertips are right and exposed to the knife. You always want to be, let me see if I can do this right, kind of in a claw, they call it the claw, but your fingers should be tucked back. What this makes happen is your knives are touching, and they can safely touch your knuckles. They're like a bumper. And as long, and then what happens is as you're going, you're feeding down the carrot with your fingers, going back, sliding against the carrot. And what happens is you're just sliding, and as you're sliding, you're feeding the carrot appropriately, and you can just keep speeding up, and you're just feeding it down. And then you can find that you both can get quicker with it, and you're very safe, and that's how you're gonna get good, quick dicing um, and slicing of like things that are thin. So this would be the same technique for anything that would be long and skinny. So carrots, um, something like um, a celery, um, anything that's a chives, it's always this motion, back and forth, back and forth, sliding. Now, one of the things is, let me see if I can do it incorrectly here. If you go down, no, that one still did it. But one thing that sometimes you'll find with some things, it's more fibrous stuff, I don't have it here with me, but something that's like a celery. You might find that you end up with a bunch of pieces, let me see if I can, well, I can't quite do it with a carrot, but you'll end up with the bottom of the piece still connected. So you'll end up with a bunch of little, little slice blades on the top, but you didn't go through enough to actually detach them on the bottom. Often when that's the case, you're not sliding forward. If you're sliding forward, there's no place for that to go except for to get fully sliced off. I'm going to click back over here because I'm not sure if you all feels awkward when I'm not actually looking into the camera and seeing you all. So anyway, so that is the first thing is that motion with that. So it's forward, back and forth. So this is something that is very good to just practice just like this. And it takes doing it a while to feel comfortable with that. Again, whatever you're doing, I'm just gonna cut this now, we're at the thick part of the carrot. Whenever you are doing chopping it all of any type, claw on this side. And again, you're just going to be pulling forward and slicing like this and pull, walking back with your fingers. And so that's how you're going to achieve our, one of our first cuts, which would just be slicing um, things like anything that's skinny and uh, like a carrot. Okay, so that's our first skill. And again, a lot of things we're gonna be doing is still gonna be having this type of motion. So this is one of the most important things we're gonna do. Um, okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit, I'm just going to pull my trash can out real quick and I'm gonna get rid of a few of these carrots so I have space, because next I have a monster on here that we are going to take apart. And I'm gonna show you a couple things. So I just took a, uh, an onion and went ahead and um, peeled it. And again, this is where, these are the types of things that you really need a good size onion for, as you can see, a good size um, knife for this size onion. Um, so sometimes people do like using smaller, like there's like some six inch chef's knives out there you can get, but that um, are great for garlic and herbs. But if you're doing something like uh, an onion like this, you, you really are gonna need a full size eight inch. Um, so anyway, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna talk about um, how to um, slice um, and dice onions. This is the procedure that I like, which is a little different than some of the things that I've sometimes seen seeing here. Um, let me see, I'll do this one again with a close-up. So you can see a little bit better. Okay, so what I like to do when I do, um, when I do my dice, I just slice down, straight down. Again, when I'm slicing, I'm keeping my fingers nice and claw. This is where it starts to get a little difficult at the very tip here. Okay, now I have just, so I cut it in half and then I just sliced nice and evenly down it. Now the way I, what, how I end up with a, with a dice, so I started like that and now think of it like almost wedging the onion this way. So all I'm doing is gonna come across here.
and I'm just wedging across. And that is how you would very quickly and efficiently with no waste. There's some other methods. Let me pull this back up so I can talk. Of course, now the onion fumes are going and it's full of all that aromatics from the onion. So hopefully I don't start tearing up here in a second. I like this method because there are other methods where you cut this way and you stop about here and then you go this way and then you go this way. And what you end up having is about a quarter of the onion that's almost impossible to dice. And also it is, I've never liked cutting this way. It's difficult, it feels awkward, it doesn't feel as safe. So as you can see, that method, I feel like um, you get a nice, even chop, quick, easy. I can take apart a few onions in just a matter of a minute or two. I have to get these into a bowl and put them away because I'm starting to feel the fumes real quick. So I'm gonna usher those off to the side. Actually, I have a on board, so I'll just switch it over. Hopefully this will fume off over here. I'll grab this guy here. So that has been the way that I have um, always done my onions of late. Um, I'd say the last probably five or six years that I, somebody showed me that option and I felt like you both had less waste. It was very easy and efficient to do and it felt a more secure. I've never been a fan of having to try to take an onion apart this way, which is a lot of times I believe, I, I believe that is what they teach in culinary school. Um, so that's my little tidbit on that. So this is going to be, um, how I not like to slice onions. So of course, obviously, sometimes when you're sauteing something and you don't want it in a dice like that, you want it maybe in rings or something. Um, what I actually like is these, these small wedges, which is the same procedure that I just did for the dice, um, but it's just wedging, right? So, so you can watch this again. I'll put it back on the, if you're wondering how I did that. So, because I did it kind of quickly, because um, there's just not really a lot to it. But, so what I'm doing here, uh, you can, again, you're going to wedge. You can do it either way. I think that what I did was slicing and then wedging, but you could also do wedge and then slice. But what I like to do when I'm doing um, sliced onions in something, let's say a stir fry or something like that, and you don't want it diced, I like to use my onions like this. And again, it's kind of a wedging. You're just going along the onion, trying to stay so you get towards the center of it. And when you get to about halfway, you then rotate it and keep wedging. And what you end up with is a nice, um, I feel like an easier onion to use when you're sauteing. Um, and so, because when you, whenever you're, of course I should have cut off a little bit of stem there, but this is just a much easier onion to saute with um, like this because, pull you back, you don't end up with those long, um, rings of it. So when, you, when you're cutting an onion, you just take it in whole and you just slice it and then you throw it in a saute pan, you get these long rings that are hard. I feel like they're not, they don't saute as easily. They're harder to move around with the spoon. They're, I don't feel like they, you can eat them as easily. So this is how I always, when I do slices, cut it in half and then go around the onion wedging it. You end up with a much easier, uh, neater piece of onion that cooks better. Um, and you can very quickly, efficiently, and safely take it apart. I'm just gonna slide this over with my other onion so I don't get teary again. All right. So, the next thing we're gonna talk about is a little bit about paring knives. So we talked about this, that a lot of people are using this knife for chopping, for onions or for doing small, like, you know, I, I know I've heard people who talk about cutting carrots or something like this with a paring knife, which is both bad on your knife when you do that because you're pushing really hard on the cutting board, which will end up dulling your knife more. And also you're banging on your knuckles when you do that. So again, that is not how you would want to use this paring knife. Um, again, much quicker, much more efficient if you just use the appropriate knife skills and take it apart this way. But how you would uh, use a paring knife, where would be the right time? So um, peeling an apple without a peeler would be one way. Um, this I'm taking off the um, skin of a orange here, like let's say we were gonna zest it um, and maybe uh, then slice this up or something to use or maybe doing um, something where we want large pieces in it, like a cider or something of that nature. But again, um, the appropriate technique, let me put this back on close up. 
this knife again is really meant for oh let's see here so I can see it is really meant for in the in your hand drawing your knife with your thumb here and you have to be careful because you have a sharp edge but taking apart like an orange doing something like that this is what this is what this knife is specifically designed for um let's see if I'm camera here there we go. So again, this would be the appropriate thing. Now again, to talk about while we have this out here, let's talk about maybe doing a very fine, um, like little julienne or something. Again, same thing, that rocky motion and just feeding um, back with your fingers, keeping that claw and then just feed back. And that's your little, you know, julienne if you were to be doing something like that where you want to just sort of thick, um, types of pieces of thick zest or something. So you could use your paring knife to take off the, the, the skin from your orange and then again, lay it flat. And that would be how you would do your chopping. Um, so again, that is what the parry knife is actually meant for. That's how it's supposed to be used, would be something like that in your hands. Okay. Now, um, this is sort of a technique thing. It's a little bit about knife skills, but it's also a little bit about just how to do it. How to take apart a bell pepper, how not to have a bunch of waste and what the correct way would be to do that. Um, so this is a kind, it, you can do this, you could do this all with the chef's knife, but it's a good way to show one of the ways in which you can, I'll go back to close up, one way you can use a parry knife and then finish off with a chef's knife. Okay, so one of the things that we're gonna do here first, we're gonna take and we're gonna make a circle, basically core out, so we're just gonna, Go around tight in here, okay? So now what I've done is I've just gone around the inside. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this blade and I'm gonna section it in half, connecting those two circular pieces. Okay, now this is the part just depends on your pepper because you got those membranes to hold on to. All right, so this one just happened to come out nice and clean. Um, sometimes it grabs. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm taking this over by the trash can so I don't get seeds everywhere, but I'm just gonna peel this off and pull out and pamp out the remaining seeds. So now I have fully taken apart with no waste. I just took out your, the seeds and um, the seeds and the, the stem there. This is a place, let's see if we can show this here. So I'm gonna segment this. I might be able to show a little bit about how this, this um, fillet knife would work. So this just pulls that membrane right off. So you can see how this is how you would use, if you're trying to, again, it's the same idea because you have these thin membranes here. You don't have to do this. I just wanted to show how, where your advantage comes in. But again, you're not gonna chop with this at all. You would just um, use something else. And then this though, it's going to um, very nicely pull away the membrane because it feels, you, with that, little curvature, you can, you can feel the difference and pull against it. So that gives you a little idea of how one would use a fillet knife. All right, I'm gonna pull back up. Okay, so now we have our four pieces of our bell pepper. And now we're gonna do basically like what we just talked about. One of the things when you're chopping, you're always gonna want, the easiest way to chop is something that's long and skinny. So you're gonna wanna create something that's basically like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of uh, bell peppers that I segmented into four pet pieces and I'm just going to turn them into thin little sticks. Let me go back to that. Okay, so what I'm doing here is just again with the claw shape on this side, I'm just gonna slice this down and I'm gonna make it so I have little slices. So of course, depending on what you're doing, you might be doing a stir fry and, and this might be the size you want. So you could just leave it like that. Or if you're not, you're gonna pile them up all nice and neat. You're going to then have your nice claw shape hand here and you're just going to feed this into and again, you're going to go with a rocking motion and just go through and take apart all those pieces. And then there you have your dice. And so that's how um, you would take it to go from um, to go from the bell pepper, break it down, and then go to a slice 
and then to a dice. Okay, so what have we done? So we've talked about taking apart an onion, we did a dice and we sliced it. We talked about carrots and other things like celery and how you would do that rocky motion to go through that. Uh, we took apart a bell pepper, showed that slicing and dicing, how to pair an orange and how to take the membrane um, off of a, a, how fillet knives work by showing that with the membrane. Um, so that sort of, you can apply that to lots of different things. Um, so like I said, if we're talking about carrots, you can apply that to celery. Um, anything else, chives, anything else that's long and skinny. Um, the same type of motions that we were talking about are really what you're going to be using for just about everything. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is a little bit about knives and how to care for them. Because one of the things that happens is, is that sometimes it's because of your knife skills and sometimes it's because of the condition of your knives. So one of the things to be aware of is that the best knives in the world that you can buy are still gonna need maintenance and they're still going to need sharpening. Um, a good knife is not that it never gets dull. A good knife means you can resharpen it and it will take a new edge. Um, so, so chopping with dull knives is, doesn't matter how good you might be with your knife skills, it's just never going to, um, it's just not gonna work. Um, so dull knives, whatever you're working on, you're just not gonna get it. Um, so, how then do you take care of your knives? What, what do you do to make sure that they're in good shape? One thing, never put them in the dishwasher. Um, a lot of the knives are technically dishwasher safe. And that means if it goes in the dishwasher, it's not gonna split in two, it won't break, it won't get messed up. But that being said, the dishwasher destroys the edge on the knife. So it will get it dull very quickly. I mean, that's what that detergent in the dishwasher is meant to do, is to sandblast on a microscopic level, the things, the stuff, the food, the dried on, whatever from your dishes off. So when that hits a very precise edge of a knife, it's just, sand, it's just taking that edge and just making it all um, dull is basically what you're doing. So, so always hand wash your knives. That's one piece of advice uh, that is very important that I could give you for any type of knife that you have. It will last longer, it will work better longer if you don't dishwash your knives. And then the other thing is how to care for them with regards to sharpening. There are tools out there. I just grabbed a couple from the floor. This is like an easy one that you might have seen. And you basically just draw the knife through. And as you draw it through, it's going to be honing and sharpening your blade. Um, there are tools like um, your honing steels like this. Um, this one is a sharpening steel. So it's actually got diamond particles on here. So it'll actually sharpen it. Um, and then you, you might hear me using this word honing versus sharpening. Honing is the type of thing that you might have thought of, which is a standard, you know, you think of the old style where you kind of see the butcher or something going like this. Normally this would be a honing. A lot of these come with your knife sets. If you purchased a knife set, they have one in here and a lot of people have no idea how to use them. The important thing with a honing steel, it's all about keeping your angle correct in the correct angle and the correct orientation, but it would mean you have to use it just about once a week or it's basically useless. Um, so, so these would be something that you want to make sure that you use regularly or go with something like this that you maybe use once every month. There are other devices that are more advanced, that are spring-loaded. Um, there's a variety of options. Um, there are different sharpening services you can use. The Happy Cook does do a knife sharpening service for $5 a blade. Uh, but either way, keeping your knives good and sharp is incredibly important because no matter how good your knife skills themselves are, there's no way um, that you're going to have success if your knives are dull. Um, so, um, so I just always want to make sure and talk about that because sometimes we have uh, people who even have very nice knives, but they've not been doing the sharpening that's necessary. And uh, they get to a point where they're, they're not performing and it's just because of that, maybe putting it in the dishwasher and uh, appropriately needing uh, to, to sharpen it. So with that being said, um, since we've had our little survey here, I'm happy to take any questions that you all might have. Okay, Monique, we had one question in the chat. Someone said, how would you um, cut an avocado? They always have trouble with those. Avocados. Um, I, I do not happen to have one on hand. So an avocado would be a good, that would be a paring knife because you don't have much space. So the appropriate so I'm from California, so I'm quite the avocado aficionado. My grandmother had an avocado tree in her backyard, so we would always go pick avocados and such. Uh, so I, I, I do know avocados well. But so basically holding 
um, well, pretend this is an avocado, holding this in your hand, slicing along the perimeter, going in a perfect all the way around, perfect circle around, it will hit on the pit. So you'll go perfectly around, and what you will have created then is a circle all the way around, and you will have touched the pit with your knife. Then with an avocado, and of course they're kind of weirdly oval shape, you cut, which is nice for doing this, you hold the avocado and pop it. So twist it, and it should, if it's right, and it was the right time to cut it, you then should be able to open it up. You'll have one half that's perfect with no pit. You'll have one half that's got the pit in it. If you cut it evenly, perfectly in half, and it's not lopsided, you then take your knife, your paring knife, and you pop it right on the, right on the pit. And your knife will embed just a little bit in the pit. And the pits are soft, so it's not going to damage your knife. So you pop it right into the pit and then twist. When you twist, it should pop the, the, the pit should just come loose. And then normally what I do is I pop the knife like boom on the side of the trash can and the pit falls right into the trash can. And then another trick about, honestly, the easiest way to cut up an avocado is doing it before you take it out of the skin. So when you have your avocado sitting in front of you and you have that hard skin, um, but no pit, if you wanted sliced avocado, the best way to do that is just take and run your paring knife. Make nice, even little lines for the however thick you want your slices. If you want it diced, you do that, and then you turn it, and you do it the other way, to crisscross. And then take a large soup spoon or a serving spoon, something that's close to the same size as the avocado. And you just run the soup spoon along the, the, the peel, and into a bowl and it pops right out. So it'll pop right out as a dice if you did back and forth or it will pop right out as slices um, if, you, if you didn't do that. And um, I've done that for years and, um, and always had great success. There are other tools that you can use after you pop it open. There are avocado slicers that are wires that you can run. It will both scoop and do the um, wires at the same time. Um, but obviously, I just use a parry knife. I found that I don't ever have any issue with it. It's very quick and efficient um, and just less stuff to clean up. So, um, but yeah, that, that would be, that would be, a, sorry, we're doing it from imagination because I don't have it here. But hopefully, hopefully those steps made sense to you, but that, that would be the technique for doing it now.